Mango Farm is uh, Commander's family land and nobody in the family was using the land, there was, nothing was happening here. Um, we're close to Nairobi, it's a fertile place, uh, lots of people here in the neighborhood need, need jobs. Um, so yeah, Commander said to me, really, we have to start something here at Melango Farm, or at the, at the farm. And we, we called it Melango Farm. Uh, so we arrived 15 years ago with, um, with a few suitcases and the, the, the land was bush. So we started farming bit by bit. Just we started with two workers and a few uh, cabbages. And from there, bit by bit by bit, we started uh, growing the farm. Um, so we are now 15 years later, we have 70 people working with us now. Um, we grow organically, so means we also need a lot of helping hands. I always say for our farm the, the eyes and the hands are most important. If you do monocropping uh, it requires pesticides because you're depleting the land too much. Um, it, it might be easy in terms of you don't need so many people. We On our farm we have a lot of people working here um, because it's just more work but it's much healthier for your soil to, uh, to, to have different crops growing all together and, and do that mix and have the have the crops helping each other also with in terms of pest control. Yeah, we have a lot of crops that deter the pests or that repel the pests or attract the pests. Um, so we, we incorporate those kind of crops as well in the farm. We use nasturtium, uh, uh, we use uh, rosemary, lemongrass, lemon verbena, uh, artemisia, basically all the uh, plants with a, with a smell with, to, to confuse the pests. And we saw, uh, oh, and, and another uh, important one is uh, onion or the, t the onion family uh, types, like the chives and the spring onion. We mix that everywhere. Um, that, that really helps with, with uh, keeping, it, uh, keeping it best free. And of course, all the helping hands also. On a farm, there's a lot of waste. Uh, and you don't want anything to go to waste. Everything has value. So you need to make sure that you use it again. So we, uh, we make a lot of our own compost, of course. We have seven or eight compost heaps all over the farm. Two or three people full time on compost. Then we have the animals. So, and they eat now what comes from the farm. They eat it and their waste goes either into the biogas or straight onto the farm again. Eh? So the, the we, we use our own manure. Um, so that's like a circle. With the biogas digester we can cook uh, about two to three hours every day. So that helps in the, in the, in the bills for the, for the gas bottles. Uh, so we, we produce our own cooking gas. And uh, that's quite significant every day. With, uh, uh, we, al we always cook for staff lunch, staff tea, and uh, that's all self-sustaining self now. We are very lucky, we, ha we have water. Um, we have two valleys down on the farm where we just saw the water was bubbling up. So we, we, we have some hand dug wells where we pump the water every day. And, and when we're pumping it, the water goes down and the next morning it's full again. So we're very lucky we have water. But in these periods of these enormous droughts, every year we see it's it's getting like this year is very bad so we really need to think of how are we going to use this water more wisely um, that's also one of the reasons why at some point we said okay we, we're not going to grow this farm bigger because water is, is an issue now we want to um, focus even more on biodiversity more trees in the beginning we focused a lot on vegetables 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 now we say okay we need to grow more trees because that will hold the um, the water in the soil better in terms of water use uh, drip irrigation uses least water so a lot of people ask us why don't you use drip irrigation um, we don't do drip irrigation because our farm always changes. We, we don't follow a certain line or a certain system. We're not, we're not the system following people. Um, it, it just doesn't work for us. Uh, 
because we grow a, a few crops like this and then the next time another gro crop is growing and we change it again. Uh, so we use uh, hose pipes, which is uh, maybe using a bit more water, but it's also um, better to, because you're basically mimicking the rain. Uh, with drip irrigation, it goes straight into the soil. You use less water, but with the hose pipe, the the water also falls off the plant. It, um, so in that way, that's also helping with the pests. Organic organic farming has its challenges. Uh, that's why you also need a lot of people working on your farm to immediately tackle the problem and find the problem when there is one. Um, another way of tackling it is small fields. Uh, if there's a problem, it's only contained in that small field. It's not a whole big, uh, big loss. Um, so yeah, so we, we, we grow organically and also with our customers, since we started very small with one customer, the awareness raising is also very important in Kenya. Um, quite a lot of our customers uh, come from Europe, from America, they know the concept of a farm share, knowing where your food is coming from. With Kenyans sometimes we, we still have to explain because they ask why can't I just go to the market and get it from there? It's cheaper maybe and, um, and I can get exactly what I want from the market. But so we're also very busy with awareness raising that it's very good to know where your food is coming from, to know this is coming from a place where they don't use all these chemicals because in the end it goes into your body and you don't want all that bad stuff in your body. Um, that awareness is growing. Um, lots and lots uh, uh, more articles in the newspapers about uh, the crazy types of chemicals that are being used in, in Kenya and there's more legislation about it luckily also. Um, so the awareness is growing and yeah we're also part of, of uh, yeah, sharing that story, know where your food is coming from. So after a few years when our farm started to look nice and because we're lucky we're so close to Nairobi we started welcoming some visitors. Maybe once a month a family would come for a day out and a nice lunch and we started charging people for a day out to the farm. Um, that started growing, uh, people like what we do here. Uh, so that started growing. At some point there was a, a lady and she said, I'm a teacher, can I come with my school class? So we thought, no, that's not a bad idea. Uh, where I come from in the Netherlands, almost every village there's an educational place where you can bring your children to pet a goat and to learn about the environment, learn about where your food comes from. So yeah, it started with that one school that we said, oh yes, of course, we can also show you around. And then we realized in a, in a big city like Nairobi, where do, where do children go to learn about these things? About yeah, about farming, where do they learn about the importance of taking care of nature. So we uh, decided to register an NGO to have the educational work that we do separately under, under a, 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 an NGO. So that's the Mlango Farm Foundation. So for schools we have a, a special cheaper fee. Um, basically for a morning visit it's 300 per child, for a whole day including lunch it's 700. Um, and then we also do family visits in the weekend, which is a bit more luxurious, three course lunch, uh, coffee, cake, a nice relaxed day out, that's uh, 2,500 per person. So I explained a lot to you about uh, what's happening on the farm, uh, how things are running on the farm. Uh, I want to show you a bit more. Um, also, here they are planting, they are, they are doing the irrigation, we have the animals on the compound and the biogas, so come with me, i show you more. In this village, uh, yeah, uh, up country, there's no garbage collection. So we need to find solutions for our own garbage. Uh, I feel very bad when we have to burn things. So we come to, uh, we come, we've come with all kinds of uh, ideas of what can we do 
with garbage. Everything that we throw away, I think, what can we do with it? Can we do something else with it? So we do a lot of these planting now. We also do that with visiting school children. They all go home with with a with a plant like this. We uh, uh, oil oil bottles we recycle, uh, yogurt cans we recycle, car tires we even recycle into steps. Um, We've also adopted a project called Eco Bricks to do something better with your own plastic. We're actually building, we're making building bricks with our own soft plastic waste. Um, so yeah, we, I like to say nothing goes to waste as much as possible. So welcome to the animal area, the livestock area of Mlango Farm. Uh, here we have many different uh, types of animals. It started with a donkey many years ago and from there we've adopted, we've uh, raised uh, many more animals. Uh, it's all for the visitors. Uh, we don't really do uh, dairy or meat. Um, well, sometimes a goat for the family meetings, but uh, it's all for teaching uh, our visitors uh, uh, about animal care, about the whole circle also with um, uh, the animals they eat from the farm, the manure is being used again for the farm, for the biogas. So the manure from the animals goes into uh, this bucket for the biogas. From the biodigester the gas goes into this pipe all the way up to the uh, up to the little kitchen that we have there for uh, staff cooking but also for farm to fork uh, cooking classes with students um, and outside on the other side of the biodigester we have the slurry coming out that is again being used on the farm uh, so here's also a whole circle of input and output to the farm we don't want to grow bigger we just want to grow better so um, we want to grow more uh, diverse crops, we want to focus more on fruit trees, uh, berry bushes, it should be full of food. Uh, sometimes you hear about food forests, but I think that's our vision as well. Uh, I don't know the official what it officially means, but I think that's it. J that you walk around and there's food everywhere, so it should be full and diverse. Um, and we want to grow more also into education uh, because we see there's really a demand for it. Uh, we have so many visitors from Nairobi who have, they have never seen a broccoli grow in the ground. Um, they have never seen a cow. Uh, that's of course the, the, the normal when you come from a city and you grow up in a city that you don't know that kind of life. But we think it's important that our visitors um, yeah, get to see that and get to appreciate where does your food come from. Also in the bigger picture, because then you also understand why is it so important that we take care of planet Earth. 